math. With Poe and Monroe. Now, this is a particularly interesting one. So this is coming from Marek. I have no idea, Sam. You should ask him about that. Do I? Well, then you probably should. There's danger uh, of certain people, uh, people that are falling and uh, and and then never hitting hitting or uh, falling and never. <sighs> Sam, look, I, I can't talk right now. I'm doing phone readings. Got to pay for a job somehow. Lexi's locked in till late too. I, I can sort you out afterwards. Yeah. String these things together. Well, you weren't far off. I'll I met him yesterday, doing the rounds, looking for reading work. Actually, he... Oh no. Um, he did mention the rota. He said there was this girl he was planning to meet up with. Said she was alone every Monday night because her parents go to the cinema. Do you know what that means? It was the rota Shaw. Fine, Sam. Birmingham. Mercury took us to Birmingham. We didn't know what for. We never really know what for. But we turned up. It started with a girl, Ginny. She was South African. I only mention it because that was its thing. Yeah, we didn't know at the time, but in hindsight, it was after South African girls, three to be exact. The Traveller wanted three. You should ask Bronwyn. She's the one that knows about rights. I just know it normally involves three, and all three share a common attribute. I guess you might call them demons, in as much as they can get inside us. Some religions talk of demons, but they don't actually exist. Uh, travelers can get inside us and make it look like we're possessed, hence the demons. Yes, disturbingly. Uh, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um, they choose a reality slash universe where they actually evolve to become the person they're possessing. So they jump in a few million years before our timelines intersect. They can't just jump into someone. It takes a few hours for that. They make the decision before they travel, which is why we can catch them. Yes, probably. The tarot doesn't just sat nav us to normal murders. Connecting with my car. There simply was no den We've got to stop meeting like this. Seriously though, Sam, I'm working. Can't it wait? Just give me to wait, okay? My hands trembled as I put the car in park. Hi, I'm... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief DuPont. Screaming for me to go. To run. No one saw me. I could just run and God forgive be someone else's problem. But I had to know. I had to know if I had just killed this girl. And looked in my rear view mirror. The red glow of my brake lights illuminated the lump 
Chief? Again? Did Dorota have any online friends? She didn't really use any social networks. Didn't have the time. Mainly just cello, cello, cello. Got any clubs or groups? Do you have access to her email? No, she didn't email much. She checked the messages on her phone. What is it you're looking for? Anything that helps solve the murder. Okay, that makes sense. Open the car door. Hello. I know you. You're the police chief. I understand that you knew Dorota Shaw. What type of photos do you take? For the paper? Record shots that any idiot with a phone can take. My studio is where the magic happens. Mainly portraiture, but I dabble in other areas. Boudoir photography? Dirty pictures? No. I do have a boudoir set, though. Lots of clients like it. It's all very tasteful and above board. I'll be looking into it. You can sleep in it if you want. It's a proper bed. Not sure you'll find anything you're looking for, though. I understand that you knew Dorota Shaw. We met briefly, yes. I freelanced for the August Chronicle, and they did a story about her. Was that the first time you met her? The scholarship to Juilliard? That's right. We exchanged a few pleasantries. I happened to mention my portrait services, so she built a session with me. When was this? A few weeks ago. To her side, but her upper body was twisted, with her back flat on the road, face staring up into the sky. Shallow breaths, but she was breathing. I looked her over. Her face was part. If you have anything else on Zach Weston, let me know. And I'm all for a good boudoir picture, but who are they for? There's definitely a strong connection between those two then. Well, unless they were for Oscar, I don't know. Unless there's someone else about to come out of the woodwork. Rain met Zach already, touting for work. Zack told Rain Dorota would be alone last night. Zack did other photo sessions with Dorota. Boudoir. I wonder what else he's not telling us. Rain still says he was praying in his room. Alone. Bronwyn and Lexi lied about being together last night. You're still following up Birmingham. Keep me posted. Yeah, you mentioned the word traveller to me, but he's nothing. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. That's it. And she no longer gripped my hand. I was gripping hers. I. How did you hear about that? Anyway, it wasn't a date. I was doing a favour for Chief Dupont. It only lasted a few minutes. Yeah, funny. Look, it's really not any of your business, Sam. That's between me and the Chief, all right? No? Who's that? Okay, so this Zach guy was connected to Dorota. He took pictures of her. Were they sleeping together? Why did you tell me that? Every time I think of her now, I'm going to see her with someone else. Who what? Boudoir photos? She sent some private photos to me by foot. Do you mean them? Yeah, yeah, I'll put them in an album for you. No. The door from the kitchen to the garage. Sorry, we're closed. Come back tomorrow or make an appointment online. Friends, yes. I know Violet very well.
Violet takes it very well, actually. I like him like that. For the frosty exterior comes a soft, warm center. I'm sorry my analogy wasn't explicit enough for you. Yes, we have sex. Rain. Yes, the tower reader. Delightful fella, but I couldn't offer him anything. He asked if he could do readings for my customers while they waited. Can't have that really, it's retail ambush. Yes. Why, what else did he say? No, not sure what you're getting at. Maybe Rain should come and ask me. Here. I'm usually here most nights. I live here, detective. Long story short, I'm divorced. My wife got the house, my business is all I have left. Yes, uh, what do you want? I already told the police she did all those things of her own accord. I didn't force her to do anything. Oh! The road to shore. Sorry, I'm afraid I didn't know her that well. For the August Chronicle, uh, she won some sort of award. I remember her cello. It kept reflecting the flash and ruining the shot. No, I went to her house, along with the reporter. It's better with these human interest stories to capture them in a natural habitat. If you ask me to drive there without my sat-nav, no. No, actually, I've been running a special offer on portraits since she came in for a studio session. Wait there. see there's photos here they're on the cello yeah now this one's in color beautiful hair oh legs wrapped around <laughs> another one here oh hang on do you see what i see Nothing else? Just a dead girl who looks alive. That's the power of photography. It preserves us forever like butterflies under a glass. What do you mean? Violet needs to mind her own business. I didn't want to mention them out of respect for the dead. You've heard of boudoir photography. It's all very tasteful, boudoir photographs are all about leading the eye and letting the imagination do the work. Most photographers mess it up. It's not supposed to resemble a Victorian whorehouse. She didn't say. Her boyfriend, I assume. Would you, uh, like to see them? <sighs> As you can see, it's all very artistic. The rotor was a natural. She lit up the front of the camera. <laughs> Want to see the videos? Oh. 
here they are. Oh, no, that one. Ah. This is the one. Here you go. There's more. This is the stuff. She's, um, how you say, um, acting? It's eight o'clock and time for another August update. Police investigating the death. He unnaturally twisted atop the pavement. I wanted to say I was breathing, but in all honesty, I think. Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. One hand on the side of my car for support. In front of me, as if ready to catch myself when I took a deep breath and lowered myself to the ground. My voice cracked and I cleared my throat, trying to retain the masculine depth in the remnants of puberty as fear swelled within me. Are you okay? Well, hello, gorgeous. Did you I came over last night, but you weren't here. Well, that explains why there was no answer when I called you. I was definitely here. Did you hear about Dorota? Everyone in town's heard. She's a local celebrity now. Local celebrity? Were you sleeping with her? Violet? Of course not. I only have eyes for you. That's not what I heard. This again. I told you. I'm not seeing anyone else. I have gorgeous women in my studio all the time, but you're special. Not because you won't take off your clothes, I'm expecting that at some point, it's just... You're so clever and well-educated, and the icing on the cake. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Hello, what is your emergency? It was dark, I didn't see her. I came around the curve and she was just there and I hit her and she's twisted weird and my calm was unraveling. Sir, calm. Hello, I'm Rain. I'm Rain, I'm Rain. Hers, I knew she was dead, but I still clung to her. You have a lovely guest house. It is quaint, isn't it? It's all my parents had when they died. They're literally sitting in my inheritance. How did your parents die? Father died first. Heart attack. They found him in the freezer when mother died. She had a pulmonary embolism. I didn't really talk to them much. Freezer? Yes. She kept him in the chest freezer because she didn't want to be alone. Stored him perfectly. Still use it today. And I was safe at home. My immediate reaction was to check my car. 
I was in such a rush that I let down myself as I jumped over the family dog sleeping in the kitchen doorway. Kitchen to the garage and flipped on the lights. I fell down. My car was there. It was pristine. It was just a night. Still on the floor. Red and blue lights reflecting. Rain! <laughs> I'm surprised to see you here. I take it you know about Dorota already. All that stuff we talked about yesterday, that's strictly between you and me. What stuff? That's the spirit. Now, I think it's best if we don't get caught speaking to each other. Overcautious, I'm sure, but I think it's for the best nonetheless. Maybe we can get together for a lad's night out after this is all blown over. Oh, yeah? uh, no. Okay. Great. Well, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Your daughter's been in a fatal accident. I'm so sorry. It it's only then I dropped the phone. I'm Zach Weston. Just sharpening my powers of persuasion. Tightly. Zack! What are you doing here? Look quick, don't let anyone see you. Why don't you want anyone to see me? Are you happy Dorota's dead? I didn't say that. But we both know what Dorota was like. She practically threw herself at you. Why do you think that? The boudoir sessions. Some girls get the wrong idea. I saw how she was looking at you. She wanted it. You were there. No, silly. But I saw the photos. Why don't, why don't you want anyone to see me? What? You're the one who said we shouldn't be seen together. What are you doing here? I wanted to make sure we were still okay. What did you do? What did you say to Sam? Everyone's talking about Dorota. I know. But I suppose people like that attract trouble. People like what? Is that why you killed her? That's not funny, Zack. What if Sam heard? Not, not as very bad spirits, just could be good spirits. <laughs> oh, that one. There's no other use for it. Thanks, Mundra. Zack, let me stop you there. Um, you are one creepy fellow. Now, I, I don't know what you had going on with Dorota, but I don't want anything to do with it. Do not come back here. Please. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Read by Jessa from the Jessa Chin. She said. Then she cut off. It took a lot of effort with the butter knife alternately plunging and trying to saw. I'm Oscar. Is there anything else I can do? Section of frontal lobe, nasal cavity. It was completely empty. I stared into the hole. Her body is nothing more than a prison for your consciousness. Long since forgotten you, free yourself. When I used the knife, it hurt. Sensing the thing with Bronwyn went badly. 
Why did you put me up to it? I need all hands on deck. You're a hand. At least I thought you were. Nothing happened. She tried to sleep with me. Well, that's strange. That's very strange. Doesn't seem like something she'd do at all. You don't even look like you make a good couple. Maybe she was on to you. Is there anything else I can do? No, you've done enough. I'll keep up my end of the bargain, make those speeding tickets go away, though technically you'd have more points than a hedgehog if I kept them. And if I do catch you speeding in August again, Oscar, instant ban. Capiche? Yes, capiche? It's language. That makes me look cool. You can go now. A solid body connecting. There simply was no denying that sickening thump. When my car finally skidded to a full... Park, and I just sat there. Ugh, oh, do we really have to? Is that what he calls it? I'm not sure what we have, Sam, and I'm not sure how much longer we're going to have it. Being with Zack is no paradise, I can tell you. It's like his reproductive genes rule every decision he makes. I just want someone who will hold the door open for me, bring me tea in bed. The red glow of my brake lights illuminated the lump lying in the road behind. <laughs> I bet he is. It was that thing I told you about, Dorota. I mean, I didn't know it was her then. He wanted to show me these explicit photos of her, but I refused. And that's when he told me about her being alone on Mondays. I wonder who else he told that to. Unfastening my seatbelt and making myself open the car door. The interior... Remind me that the keys were still... It's 8 o'clock and time for another August update. Police investigating the death of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw have said there's no evidence to connect her boyfriend to the murder. Chief Dupont's statement was delivered in response to speculation from local residents that it was a crime of passion. Miss Shaw's strangled body was found by her mother around 10 p.m. last night in what the chief is calling a puzzling crime. I can't believe people are gossiping already, Poe. It's always the person closest to the victim, isn't that what they say? But that poor boy. A reminder also that due to the murder, this weekend's Tulip Festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced soon. The weather's getting worse tonight with heavy rain forecast. So if you're heading out, you might want to take a jacket. Or a cab. Or wear the jacket in the cab. That's 8 o'clock with Poe and Monroe. Sam, um, I've got news. Uh, we've done a reading. It's the Five of Swords. That's the same card as yesterday. Let's hope it's not the Knight of Wands. This doesn't look good. It's fine. This happens all the time. There are 78 cards in the deck. The same ones come up a lot. I get it. But we drew the exact same cards yesterday. What are the odds of putting all three again? One in 474,552. I know. I get asked a lot. Bet it's the Ten of Swords. happening again. There's going to be another murder. 
Then Lexi did her thing, and now we have a name. Ellis Munro. Sam, I've just arrested Bronwyn and Lexi. I know, I know I don't really have anything, but they have been winding me up all day, coming in here, talking to me like I'm a suspect, and generally being weird. So, they're safely behind bars now, and presumably Ellis will live. Just keep an eye on Rain. Perhaps he'll take over the job if no one else is around. To a deeper and richer blue, like... ...solved issue. This was something you could say about most. Sam, do me a favour. Go easy on Violet. If we need to get anything out of her, let me deal with it. She'll open up to me. Why? I'm assuming that's just a gut feeling. If you actually knew who the murderer was, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Look, I see you're starting to care for these people already, but Violet's been watching them like a hawk. If you can convince her, you convince me. We've got a new target, Ellis Munro. Rain still says he was praying in his room, alone. Bronwyn and Lexi lied about being together last night. Violet says she doesn't remember last night, but I've got that in hand. Zach Weston says he was in his studio last night. No one corroborates. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. That's it. Very close with what he was saying because dream and from your explanation of this dream. Monroe. Everyone knows her. She's a local radio star here. I always get the shot, Sam. One way or another. Be loved for for who you are. You must be Sam. I just got off the phone with Chief Dupont. I can't believe it. First Dorota? Now me. We're co-hosts on the radio. Oh, sorry. You know that already. Um, we've been partners for two years now. He's a good friend. Can't we be both, Sam? Poe's his radio name. He's actually John Poe. He's on air now, but you can come back at 8.30 if you want to see him. On air, we both were. We broadcast live hourly news reports. It's how we keep our funding. Friends. I hadn't known her for long, only a few weeks. We met at the gala. I was hosting and she was playing the cello, you know? I guess we talked for a little while and then she asked me for a drink after the show. After we'd had a few drinks, she invited me back to her house. I thought we were just going to chat, watch a movie, that sort of thing. Then she kissed me. I was so shocked. She was so attractive. So I kissed her back. This is just between us, right? We fooled around. I don't have many friends, Sam. Everyone thinks because I'm on the radio, I have tons of friends, so nobody ever approaches me. I get lonely. But Dorota was my friend, and I liked making her happy.
I'm not going into detail, Sam. We pledged each other. Multiple times. Oscar. Yeah. She was a bit confused. When we started seeing each other, she didn't... She didn't like him touching her anymore. I didn't mind. But she did. So I told her if he wanted to get sexual, then maybe she should try something else. I said some guys like to watch. So... Tell him it would be sexy if he could look, but he couldn't... Touch. As far as I know, it worked. She told Oscar to watch from her walk-in wardrobe. When he was at a safe distance, she put on a show. She faked it. She told me she faked it. But you'd know best. It was her mom's. She was saving any case she ever got married. No. Sorry. I did have a strange dream last night, though. My life was playing on a TV screen. And every time I did something, another version of me started playing over the first. In the end, there were so many versions, it became a fog. It filled my lungs. I couldn't breathe. And then I woke up. What do you think that means, Sam? REM sleep. So, you don't think dreams mean anything? Everyone has meaningful dreams, Sam. Everyone. Just don't hurt me. Or let me get hurt. Not very well. He's done a few shoots of me and Poe. To promote the show. No. Zack keeps asking, but I just don't want to. Not for him, but Dorota did. She gave me the pictures as a gift. She looked amazing. Sam, you forgot your phone. Good point there with the alien look, but it, it's quite an ancient object, isn't it? It's not modern. Not at all. This Excellent work. Gold star for you. <laughs> oh, hello. This is my goddaughter, Sophia. She's only nine and she's a maths genius. Hello. <laughs> I have to pop to my room to get something. Be nice to her while I'm gone. Otherwise I might have to smother you in your sleep. What's your name? No, you're not. I've seen the boogeyman. Don't look like you. Do you want to know a secret? Violet was taken by aliens in their ship. She doesn't want anyone to know. Sorry about that. Sophia, your mother will be here for you soon, so run along and wait. <laughs> now, Sam, how can I help you? She has a whole wicked imagination for her age. I was seeing and hearing things that weren't there. That's why I'm taking pills. 
I needed to confide in someone, so I told Chief Dupont. Just Chief Dupont. And now you, apparently. Why are you talking about this again? You understand, every time you mention abduction, it opens up a vault of crushing memories that I'd rather stay locked up. No. Not even the moon. <sighs> I don't really want to. About a month ago, the guest house was empty and I was alone in my bedroom. All I could hear was dripping. A cold tap. Drip. 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 And then it began. I could smell iron, a strong metallic smell. Then I could taste it on my tongue. And then weightlessness, like time and space had stopped. That was the first time they took me. It's happened five times, even on Clozapine get that strange aura, then I'm gone. I tests for epilepsy, amongst other things. But all the scans were normal. As far as I know, I've gone. It's difficult to explain. I'm stuck in the wall of an enormous room made from these wooden vines, except the vines slowly move and drip with pain. My head is pushed out like I'm a trophy. If I look to my side, there are others, heads, all prisoners, being experimented on. They rearrange us like decorations. Suck us backwards into the darkness and then thrust us back through the wall. And when they return me home, I'm broken. Cuts. Bruises. Memories. What do you know? I'm not sure that changes my mind. We're talking about a possible murderer, Sam. Of course! Poe and Monroe. She's on the radio. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's like... How could you let Chief Dupont do that? I'm not talking to you until you get this fixed. Bronwyn was on tarotasm, Sam, just like she was an hour ago, and they record everything, so her alibi should be without question. She was just lying to protect Lexi. She's maternal like that. Or a lion with wings? Yes. You're right. A winged lion? lion? You're only alive because we want you to be. Hi, I... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief Dupont. Hans. The library burned down three weeks after their sale. Would you... Claude. Says, but when used correctly in a pair... Well, oh, wow. So that's what can happen. In your cell. Chief, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, is it about the boudoir photos? Yeah. So it's true then? I haven't seen them. I'm sorry. It's all tasteful stuff. Maybe a gift for you. I didn't get them. No, I feel like I'm the only person who hasn't seen them. What did you want to ask? Am I still a suspect? 
Yes. But I was playing football and there was loads of witnesses. How? Everyone is a suspect. You killed her after and planted the body. It takes half an hour to get to football. And what? I left her in the boot while I went to have a kick about. I'm starting to see why the hired Sam now. It was discovered just... ...most of the well's content. Chief DuPont, thanks for calling in. I'm just checking your safe. At the moment, my heart's beating a thousand times a minute and I can't sit still. Every noise or knock on the door makes me jump out of my skin and I keep looking behind me. Is that safe? Have I ever let you down? What's really worrying you? That you're just saying you're doing things when you're not actually doing anything. What's the plan, Chief Dupont? How do we stop this from happening? How do we stop me from dying? So than before. Well, mm. I do like dreams like this, Poe. Please tell mm -hmm. me what you think about this one. Hmm. Yeah, so... Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. And I'm wondering what, what the shopping stands for, whether it's... Bro, you, you, you have, you've interpreted so many dreams. Um, it puts, makes me... Violet, if this is about releasing people from prison, the answer is no. I'm going to need hard evidence for that to happen. No. Go! Back to the guest house? I think you might need a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, keep going the way you're going. Hello, lovely. Take a look at this. It's a picture of the rotor. I don't want to see pictures of your conquests. It's not like that. It's just a press photo. Do you see anything in it? A girl holding a cello. What do you see? Beautiful lady. I can make you look like that, Violet. You just need to let me. You might always be giving more to other people than you. Perhaps where you feel that others see you as someone else's significant other, rather than actually having your own identity as yourself. Hello, I'm Rain. Perhaps, Gabby, you might have to challenge in your life. Who is Sophia? You saw her, did you? She's my goddaughter, at that age where she overshares. <laughs> is she a ghost? What makes you say that, Rain? Is there something about her aura? This is what I brought in today. What do you think it is? Oh, wow. Um... Tell the listeners a bit more about what the object It's quite small. Um... And... It's... And he looks like he's in... He... Haven't you done enough predicting my death? I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just kidding. I know it's not your fault. Well... Unless you're the killer. Have you made a decision about the show? I think it's a no. Sorry. It's just the reading that you gave me the other day. I don't want to scare off the audience. Why would I scare off your listeners? What reading? The reading you gave me. To show me what you could do. It was scarily accurate. What was accurate about it? Everything. My broken heart, the enveloping darkness, my beautiful death. You said it was just a metaphor. 
that it was just about transformation, but it's not. I'm going to die, aren't I? If you hadn't seen this. Pearl's curiosity shop is now closed. Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm Ellis. Trying to remember their names, but I can't. And then I realize that my family because I've forgotten who they are. Oh, Robin. Up to every day. What do you think, Poe? What do you think this perhaps could represent? Uh, well, Monroe, I think with the family, so I think there are... Perhaps Robin has a uh, wish to reconnect with her family. Um, but... It's just not possible for, for, for Robin. I'm Zach Weston. Just sharpening my powers of persuasion. To their family as, as, they, as they wanted to. I need to talk about Ellis Monroe. What have you been doing with Ellis Monroe? What haven't I been doing? You are so irritating. Want to fool around? No, I do not. I've got more important things to do, Zach. You're feeling. Now, from what I'm taking from this, Robin, from a painful situation that's happened in your past, and you feel overwhelmed by the emotions caused by it. Many of us go through situations. And I Zach, what are you doing here? I've been a naughty boy. I need to tell my previous partners. Good to know. I'm not one of them though, so... Unless there's anything else? Pose for me. Zach, please stop asking. It's not gonna happen. Just uh, undo a few buttons, yeah? Are you bullying me into taking my clothes off for you? That's sleazy. Just leave, Zach, before I call Chief DuPont. Dreams. And nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. Now this is a particularly interesting one. So Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm Ellis. I'm Oscar. Is there anything else I can do? Some some danger that's mm -hmm. lurking um, uh, of certain people, uh, people that are that this. Um, uh, and never falling, and, uh, and and then never hitting, hitting, uh, falling and never hitting. Oscar, good. You got my message. Got some things to show you. What have you got? Does um, this mean anything to you? That's Dorota. And what if I showed you this? Ellis Monroe. Do you know her? She's from the radio. And if I do this? No? Anything? What are you doing? That'll be all. You can go now. Oh. Mm, I hardly ever. School Wainwright! I've heard so much about you. Were you sleeping with Dorota? No. Were you? She just asked me to watch. I didn't even get past the adverts. Watched her? 
Yes, I watched her. You know she's into that. That can't be news to you. Um, what you said about your dream is that you're trying... Oscar, I'm so sorry. What can I do? Were you seeing Dorota? Oscar... It's so much more complicated than that. Why didn't you save her? Is it really? Tell me. Oscar, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. That's not who I am. I go out of my way to help people. To be kind to them. So were you helping or being kind? I had feelings for her, Oscar. You should understand that. I'm sorry this is how you had to hear it. But... Maybe she didn't tell you because she was leaving me. I don't know. I'm sorry. I truly am. I forgive you. You want to make it up to me? How? Maybe if I knew what Dorota saw in you, it'd help. What do you mean? We should sleep together. That's fair. I'll just freshen up. And you can put it in me while I think of Dorota's cold, lifeless body. That way, at least one of us is still thinking of her. You can go now. In front of my car. Naturally, I slammed on the brakes and attempted to swerve away from her, but I still felt the Thump. When my car finally And you're sure it was her? Then it couldn't be her, could it? You want me to tell Claude, don't you? Sorry, I mean Chief Dupont. Fine, fine, I'll call him. was screaming for me to go, to run. No one saw me. No. What do you know about it? Yeah, I, I pulled in a few bug-eyed aliens, but I wouldn't confess. I've got a murder to solve. Can we talk about this later? Fine. Let me do the paperwork. I'm starting to regret hiring you. Maybe you should concentrate on something else. Run. Every... In your gut when you... To get the fuck out of Dodge before you get caught up in it was raging in me, but here I was, unfastening. A little bit. What did you want to know? A right can take many forms, but from what we know about these travelers, it seems to be performing some kind of coming of age ceremony. Yes, a rite of passage. Running havoc in our dimension is rewarded in theirs. Not fair, is it? Three is a powerful number. There's a divine balance to it in our universe anyway. But maybe it doesn't mean anything where the traveler is from. Maybe three is just the carry on limit for interdimensional travel. Was it a gold coin? Hmm. That's more of a serial killer thing than a possessed by a traveler thing. It's a bit showy, but well, there's no guarantees. I've heard on the radio, but other than that, I don't know anything about her. I want to help them. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Although we can be sure of one thing. Not 
necessarily. If it's a traveler, then they just jump into any vessel, have their fun and go. It just needs to be someone nearby. Yes, of course, anything. Why Violet? Do you think she's in danger? You don't think she's involved, do you? Leave it with me, I'll see what I can find out. And don't worry, I'll be super discreet. No. I can do a reading if you want. Chariot. Is Zack a suspect? I'm sensing there's a lot of tension, pent up frustration, like he's trying to keep everything together and if he can just do that. I'm sorry, that's not much help to you, is it? And I was gripping hers, I knew she was dead, but I still. So what's the news about Ellis? I feel so useless sitting here. I want to help. Yes, please use me. Tell me what to do. Who's that? Is he a suspect? I guess he must be. Okay, I'm on the case. Just give me a minute to get ready and I'll be off. In my hand. Sir? Hi. I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. Was to get up and run down to the garage to check my car. Thank you for helping with the Chief. I'm not a monster, Bronwyn. I believe in justice too. Do you believe Tara can predict things now? I'm not one for mystics and crystal balls. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> it says you're lying about your alibi. Did it really? Can it predict the murderer? No, of course not. You'd have done that already. I pulled myself to my feet and headed towards the door. What a day. Ellis Monroe, then. Looks like our traveller likes redheads. I wouldn't be so sure. Well, what then? Just young women in general? No. I think it's definitely looking for redheads. I watched them walk up the driveway. Bron, what are we going to do about Ellis? What would you do about Ellis? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Let's think. What have we tried before? A few times we've caught up with the traveller and nothing's worked. Talk talking to them? Please don't kill that person. <laughs> okay, thanks. Oh no, look, you killed them anyway. You know that doesn't work, Ron. Gripping my hand tightly. To Radio August. I just Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Get out now before I call the police! Firmly, blew on his fingers, then resumed his painful progress. From the doorway of the boarded up shop across the street, two young men watched. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Jenner. The old man reached the entrance to an alleyway. That
deep shadow where the street lamp had been vandalized. Lexi Corn, how thin are these walls? What do you mean the walls are thin? I can hear you screaming at your Ouija board last night too. I feel like I've heard your whole life story. What did you hear? Does Sam like me? Is Violet a lesbian? Will Ellis die? Will Bromwen die? That last one, don't worry about that. What? Because you're immortal. Ah, oh, I. I am Bronwyn McLeod from the Clan McLeod, and I am immortal. You silly badger. Open the gates of madness and experience. Our job is so stressful. Tell me about it. Chasing around the unknown, trying to triumph good over evil, generally standing around helpless watching people die. Why do we do it? Why don't we just quit? Why do we do it? For me, it's a common decency thing. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Did you know the Earth was overrun by transdimensional evil? Want to help fix it? <laughs> sure. Transdimensional evil? I'll read the manual, Lex. People are afraid of ghosts, zombies, and aliens. They never even think to consider the possibility that there are millions of universes, potentially with millions of predators, all far more evolved than we are. What are our chances of victory? Minuscule. But if we don't fight at all, zero. I was not connected with the police manhunt after the body was found. His own. Sorry, we're closed. Unless you're here for something else. I'm a friend of Dorota's. Dorota? I'm sorry about what happened. Dorota told me things about you. Things? That's ominously vague. I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Lexi. Lexi? I like it. It's got an edge. Dorota says she knew you. I know what you did to Dorota. I didn't do anything to Dorota. You killed her. You seduced, you killed her. I thought we were gonna have a friendly chat. I'm sorry about your friend, but I'm not having you here while you accuse me of murder. Get out. Hostile eyes. It's the dark end of the street. Footsteps behind me. Soft. But to my heightened awareness, nearly deafening, it is... The footsteps slow, but they... ...verse in anticipation. ...in each other, the footsteps behind me Cease. In Birmingham, it was a man called Yuri Harris. He worked as a butcher. He beheaded all three girls within hours of each other. And we couldn't stop it. He pleaded not guilty for reason of temporary insanity. because he said he'd see us again, in August, before we even knew it was a month and a place. Yeah, she asked for a sample reading to show what I could do. <laughs> no, he didn't seem all that interested. It's a shame. He seems like a man with lots of interesting demons. Yes, I met her at the radio station. I was offering my services. Earning a living is tricky when you travel around as much as we do. 
And last time I checked, Violet wasn't offering us room and board for free. Simply could not afford to have anyone around when the beast wakes. Casual relationships of is a phrase I've heard more than a few times. It's true. It's nine o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Investigations into the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw are continuing this evening. Miss Shaw was found dead in her home at approximately 10 p.m. last night in what police are describing as a puzzling case. Residents are urged to be cautious until the perpetrator is caught. I cannot stress this enough, August. Stay safe out there. You mean the world to me. In other news, Monroe has been detained on urgent business, so you're stuck with me until she returns. Never fear, Monroe fans. We still have lots of pre-recordings, so you can relax with her angelic tones. That's nine o'clock with Poe and Monroe. I've tried to be discriminating in my victim. Sam, I've got some heavy rain news. Lawrence Petrovsky, that's his real name. And no, he's not a Russian spy, but he does have a criminal record. He was charged with the murder of a 21 year old artist. Looks like he got off on a technicality by all accounts. About three months ago in Hong Kong, be careful, Sam. If you're going to ask him about this, it could be a flight risk. And you know, there's a good chance he could be the killer. Doors behind you. Rain's still a suspect. No corroborated alibi. Bromman Castle has one. Lexi Taylor doesn't. I've got my search back on Rain, or Petrovsky, as we should call him. He's got priors that you're looking into. Violet says she doesn't remember last night, but I've got that in hand. Zach Weston says he was in his studio last night. No one corroborates. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. That's it. And cool. His eyes are glazed over with... Hey, I'm going. There's too many people asking questions. It's exhausting. I'm off to stay at my aunt's. I'll come back tomorrow, but I've said everything I can say. you. Give me the money. He pulls out the knife. Probably right here. Why? I didn't realize I was under house arrest. Thanks for the advice. I hope I'm not the only suspect. The held exhilaration of the beast sets my son. For now becomes the hunted for. You're the detective. Monroe just called. This is madness. Who would want to hurt her? We've worked together for years. She's the light to my shade, the angel to my demon, the diamond to my lump of coal. She told me to say all those things. Heavens no, I have a wife and three children, beloved spawn of my loins. Monroe and I are good friends, that's all. You know, this town is fascinating. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Have you ever read up on the real history of August? The official story is that Mary August retired from a life on the high seas, found a nice spot here, and used her ill-gotten gains to establish a town. But that's not what really happened. It's true that Mary August was a pirate, but she didn't retire. Her ship was sunk on the rocks just off the coast. Mary and all of her crew sought refuge in a small fishing town, this one. 
they slaughtered everyone, men, women, and children, all dead and dismembered in their own homes. The bodies were dumped in a mass grave. Well, the body parts, and the pirates moved in. No one knows. It seems at some point it was built over and then forgotten about. It could be under the school or the church or right beneath our feet. Only a madman or woman. Monroe is August's sweetheart. Poe and Monroe, that was her idea. Our show. We were just another local radio station before that. It was Monroe who decided we should have a theme. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Don't tell me you haven't heard it, Detective. That's what the Free Radio Project is all about. Uniting August via the airwaves. Monroe's been delivering free radios anywhere people might want to listen. Doctor surgeries, hairdressers, the guest house. That's cynical, Detective. Not at all. We aren't the only show on the radio. We interviewed her about her scholarship not too long ago. Do you think whoever killed Dorota plans to kill Monroe? What makes you think she's in danger? Tarot. Does this have anything to do with the gentleman who stopped by? On air, uh, much of our broadcast is pre-recorded, but we always do the hourly news live. On that note, I should probably get back to the booth. The show must go on. Death threats be damned. Look after Monroe, detective. She's the only Monroe I've got. It's now 10 o'clock. Here's your August update. Investigations deepen into last night's murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw, a talented cellist who had... Alien. And from what I can see, it's like a alien, I suppose, with two alien babies. And then it's... Oh, it's you. I was hoping it might be Zack. No. And I've got some very important news for him, if he ever shows up. Yes. If he ever shows up. No. Oh, him, yes. I've heard him on the radio. Never met him in real life, though. Are you mocking me, Sam? No, I have never met the man. Ah, yes, now I remember. It's the one in the hall. Sometimes cuts through the uh, unbearable silence in this place. Not really. I expected her to be blonde for some reason. Well, oh, that is... that is, um... Sorry, Sam, what can I do for you? Yeah, I, I always cry around this time of night, Sam. Um, what's the point, Sam, huh? If we can't save them. Mercury is a curse. It's like some tourist guide for murders. I try for Lexi and Rain to make them think that we can make a difference, make a change, but we haven't so far. What if we can't make a change? I 
this is it. If Ellis dies, I burn Mercury. If we don't have it, it can't lead us halfway around the world. It, oh. Yes, she's definitely got a monkey on her back. I saw her get changed. She's got all these scars on her back in the shape of a monkey. Like they've been burned into her. What the hell happened to her, Sam? Yes, I've managed to sneak a look at her laptop. She's been Googling Ellis Munro. It rings a bell, but no. Sorry, Sam. Oh, it must be bronze. Correct. Honestly, you don't. Once they're caught, a few hours later, they've hopped timelines into someone else. We just keep chasing them. Continuously trying to stop them ruining lives. Yes, but it kills the vessel too. So, you could have a traveller inside you right now, and if I killed you, you'd both be dead. I'm not sure. It's a lovely place. It has the third most high-rise buildings of any city in the world. <laughs> so that's what this is about. Chief Dupont has finally dug up my old record. I am Lawrence Petrovsky. Victoria Cheng. A very good painter. I didn't kill her though. I was trying to save her. Hong Kong. It was our third encounter with a traveller. We'd managed to trap her on the roof of an apartment complex. Roughly translated, the building was called Flight, which was ironic. When the traveller realised we had it cornered, it tried to jump off. I managed to grab Victoria's ankle, but I couldn't hold on. Hong Kong being Hong Kong, there was about 37 tourists that filmed the whole thing. So to some people, it looked like I was dangling her over the edge of a building to meet her doom. I wasn't. I was trying to save her. But then they're realizing they're doing it themselves. You know, Poe, I think you're... Oh my god, who told you about Victoria? She died, jumped off a building. We tried to save her. Well, Rain tried to save her. Sam, we need to save Ellis. Victoria's already gone. It was weird. Zach thought he'd already met me. Why would that be, Sam? That's what I thought, although I'm sure he said my name. Anyway, I did find out one thing. He has a massive collection of books about serial killers. What's that about? A who, what, but what? <laughs> I don't think so. He's off the radio. I don't really know him. Actually, I'm glad you're here. I really, really want to do a reading for you right now. You know, to help. Great. Let me just draw three cards for you. Um, I shuffled before you got here. Okay. No, oh, the two of cups. That's mysterious. Is there anyone you feel a spark of attraction to? Maybe someone you've met recently? 
The lovers. I did not expect that. It seems this attraction has the potential to be life-changing, if you want it to be. And finally, the Knight of Cups. This card is about pursuing your heart's desire. I think it's time to tell that someone special how you really feel. Wow, what an interesting reading. Does it mean anything to you? You catch on quickly, don't you, Sam? Emotions um, from the past. Now, the photo albums, they represent your past, Robin. So forgetting also suggests that you're... Don't confirm the existence of travelers. They're not ready. Hi, I... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief DuPont. And if I'm honest, I just want to let you know that so many of us go through situ Did you get a call from my doctor? Your doctor did call. Did you tell her I was being compliant? I said... Are you? I said you were taking the pills. Are you? No. Not anymore. I think you're supposed to take the pills, Violet. Well, you're normally more forceful about it, Claude. You said my UFO was real. So why am I taking pills? I didn't say the UFO was real. Are you trying to make me go mad? Just an hour ago, you said there was a UFO sighting. Now it's take the pills, Violet. You said you saw other heads when you were taken. Yes. Other girls, younger than me. Nobody I recognised. They all had red hair. Do you think this place is nearby? They all had red hair. Do you think this place is nearby? Maybe. If there's some kind of film studio or something. The place didn't look like this place. My memories are vivid and clouded at the same time. So that's quite a history to it, doesn't it? It sounds awful. Yeah, quite creepy. Shop is now renounced. Tell me about Hong Kong. What does the name Lawrence Petrovsky mean to you? Well done, Chief. You've discovered Rain is my stage name. Please try and save Ellis. She's the one in danger, and we've already had one dead body on your watch. Tell me about Hong Kong. If you know about Hong Kong, then I don't have to tell you anything. It's all in that report that you've clearly read. Maybe to hang a hang something on? Like a coat? I haven't asked you about Zack yet. Until a few hours ago, I never heard of the guy. Creepy as fudge, if you ask me. Thanks, Lexi. It's always a pleasure. Anything for you, Chief? Sheets. That's what it is. Really? Yeah. Nobody takes that takes that amount of care. All young women in Kiev. They were all identical quadruple. Chief DuPont. Grave news indeed. Will Ellis be safe with you here? No. She wants me to keep broadcasting, which means I'll be booth-bound for most of the night. She'd be safer at home with someone protecting her. Can't I get someone else to handle the radio? And murder Poe and Monroe? No, Chief DuPont. Ellis couldn't take that. Not tonight. We did think of asking you to do a guest evening at some point, though. 
if you're interested. No, I would love to. Then I will pencil you in, Chief. It will be an honor and a privilege. Sorry, I must go back to the broadcast. The radio, she pulls me like a siren and she must be obeyed. Then resumed his painful progress. From the doorway of the boarded up shop across the street, two young men watched. The low cloud had brought the day to a premature dusk and the... Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. Led down past the churchyard. Halfway down the alley was a patch of deep... He paused for a moment, then turned. The young men looked up and down the street, then lengthening their stride. The first time scared the shit out of me. Night after night, I dreamt of blood. I slipped into a twilight world where I... Did it. Violet, I'm actually a bit tied up at the moment. Well, in danger, actually. I found one. Gates of madness and experienced the beast's feeding frenzy for the first time. It changed my life. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. I seven weeks at a mental institution trying to rebuild my life. At first they tried to get me to talk. What can we do to help Alice? Haven't we done enough? Not many people get to know when they're going to die, let alone get the chance to avoid it. We've given Ellis a huge advantage. So what should we do? Do you really think she's got a chance? Maybe. Maybe Sam's her lucky charm. Anything short of an apocalypse would be considered a victory at this point. I was not connected with the police manhunt after the body was found. What are you doing now? I don't know. I don't want to lie about my alibi again, though. What should I do? Log into Tarotism. Good idea. I'll stay in my room, log in, and wait for you to give me the all clear. Then they'll know I'm not a suspect. You're the best. <laughs> More anonymous than the tube and fewer cameras. Pulled up the hood and walk out into the rain. And I lose myself in it. Chucking out time. Take away kebabs and banded doorways offering their tawdry charms without conviction. A taxi speeds by me, splashing me with spray from the public. Hello, I'm Rain. I'm Rain, I'm Rain, okay. Steps behind me, soft, but... Why do you think the killer's chosen Ellis? Because she sees her as a threat. Or he. Within me, the beast snarls and slop. It's getting closer, isn't it? What's getting closer? The event. Whatever's going to happen to Ellis. I can feel it. Do you think this John Pope is involved? I doubt it. As far as I know, they're live on air a lot of the time and not sure he could have nipped out murdered Dorota and made it back for the news at 10. So it could be him then? It could be anyone. It could be you, Ray. 
I once watched it overwhelm three skinheads who thought I was their vi- Hey. How's the Ouija? Full of annoying voices that aren't helping me. I've only just got back from the photographer's place, so I haven't had a chance to go at it yet. Say anything about me? I didn't ask it about you. Do you think I should? Yes. No. Yes. Alrighty, stay there and I'll think of a question. Okay, let's see. Oh dear. I asked it if you were still the same Rain I knew and loved. A steady girlfriend or a wife is out of the question. I simply cannot afford to have anyone around when the be relationships have foundered on this world. This to you is a phrase I've heard more than a few times. I will not tell. Brain, what an unexpected pleasure. Maybe you could help me with something. Sure. No. Sure. When you were here yesterday, you don't recall seeing a small green velvet pouch anywhere, do you? No. Well, keep your eyes peeled. The pouch contains Augustian gold coins believed to have been part of Mary August's original hoard. I'm oh, sorry you don't know the town's origin story, do you? Suffice to say, if you see them, please return them to me. They're in the pouch for a reason. If anyone comes into contact with them, bad things happen. Ah, I have to be on air in a minute. Another time, maybe? I've tried to be discriminating in my victims. No true innocents have been fed to the beast, though that first time was pretty close. But everyone... Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um... <clears throat> I'm Lexi. In shadow, under dark walls with a shuttered double door, just a... ground. For a moment, I, I think the footsteps are... It's going to be soon. Whatever happens to Alice, it will be soon. How do you know it's going to be soon? I can sense it. Are you not picking anything up, Lex? There's a traveler nearby. No. How do you know all this? Masculine, mainly, but I don't recommend you try it. Do you really want to hear this? Yeah. No. Yes. <sighs> At uni, I read a book by Aldous Huxley called The Doors of Perception. He takes masculine and basically trips his balls off. And the party girl I used to be thought, yay. My experience wasn't anything like his, though. People look like tiny rainbow outlines, and I would notice that some of them would just appear from nowhere. Those ones, the ones from nowhere, I think they're the travelers. They kind of merge into one person, and suddenly there's only one outline. That's what I see. But you, no drugs for you, young lady. Tea and nothing else, all right? As my hand sees him with strength. So, aliens, Violet. What are we thinking, Lex? Violet and aliens? Violet and aliens? Hasn't Bron told you? Violet said she was abducted by aliens, but not your usual stick-me-on-a-slab-call-me-grey type aliens. Aliens that decorate. Decorating aliens? A traveller? Decorating aliens? Strange, isn't it? Why would an alien decorate? Perhaps an alien that's not an alien? If it's a traveller, why is it strangling people? 
Why August? I have no idea. August is basically our hellmouth. Ray, why do you pray for them? Well, because right now, I can't think of anything else that would help. Maybe try and get answers from the tarot? The only tarot with real answers is Mercury, and Mercury asks the questions. So other than staring at it for the rest of the night, I'm out of ideas. A thin drizzle mists the street light. I pull my hood closer, seeking anonymity, meeting no eyes as I... Trafalgar Square at last. Of them knowing and almost... Energy fills me as I wait in the rain. The time the night bus arrives, the high has passed, leaving me drained and depressed. And as I think about the weeks ahead of me, the paranoia... Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm Ellis. Ramp. Safe home at last. The most anonymous block I could find. I relax in a warm bath and wonder whether they found. Feel the satiated slumber of the beast and the memory of the assault. I long to sleep myself, but everything must be put in order. Disposal, I'll take them to the dump tomorrow first thing. Then I'll need to trawl through the charity shops ready for the next time. Will be a next- Ellis, do you have the amethyst? What amethyst? Poe's amethyst pendant. The one we have the bio for. Pose pendant? Okay, we're playing silly buggers now. Don't worry about it. My buyer would have found something by the time you pitch up with it anyway. Walked down the alley as fast as his arthritis. Oh, I'm so sorry. You mean everything to me. I won't let you die. Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. It's you who's shrouded in darkness, my love. Elle, we must finish what we started. Nope. What do you mean? Let's finish it. What do you mean? Us. Our love. I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to leave her. I know I keep saying it. But this time, I really do mean it. Are you ready to spend the rest of your life with me, no matter its length? No. Yes? Elle, I fell in love with you the first day we met. You ripped out my heart, diced it into pieces, and reshaped it in your form. I will always be yours, forever. Elle, Will you marry me? No. Yes! Elle, I love you. You don't know how happy you've made me. My angel. My absolute angel. Are you really married? Yes, you've met my wife and family. They're sadly not actors I've hired to make my life look richer than it is. Tomorrow, I will tell her about us, and I will leave her, another heart broken, another family destroyed, another villainous father. Is your, is your wife going to kill me? How long have we been together? Is your wife going to kill me? No, at least I don't think so, to think about us. Not yet, anyhow. Oh. Um... Tell the listeners a bit more about what the object is that I brought in today. So it's quite small. Um... I'm Zach Weston. 
just sharpening my powers of persuasion. Actually, he's maybe a Buddhist? Mm. Zack, the game is up. I think you should leave town. What? I know where you were last night. I followed you to Dorota's house. Well, I didn't know it was Dorota's house until we arrived. Call it women's intuition. I was at the studio. No, you weren't. That detective's not stupid. Dupont might be, but not Sam. They'll put two and two together. And then what? And then they're going to arrest you. You weren't there long, I suppose, but then... I guess it doesn't take you long, does it? You were spying on me. I saw you leave her house, and then I went in. She was naked, lying radiant on the bed. What did I find in her closet? A wedding dress. Who was that for, Zack? Who was that for? I'm done covering for you. We're finished. You need to leave. Now. The day he volunteered for a top secret project at an undisclosed location. At those words, undisclosed location. He had a... Instead, he now found himself on the far side of the moon. Sheffield, an expert in the field of archaeology, hadn't had a breath of fresh air in eight months. Gravity, a lack of sunlight, and the project's mountain. Good evening, Zachary. <laughs> That's for being a creep with Ellis. Now get out of my radio station. Being. But the work kept him going. It had to. Dimitri kept reminding the others, and himself, that they were right. I'm Poe, and this is your August update. August. Update. But that initial spark of enthusiasm had faded. I'm sorry, can I help you? I've just moved in next door. It's not a very good time at the moment, I'm afraid. Really? Uh, anything I can help with? No, not really. Was joined in the elevator by the other three members of his side. Ian Remington, Dr. Hanako Yutani, and Dr. Woods in their fields, those being paleontology, respectively. Dimitri glanced at them and for the first time noticed their hollow cheek. It seemed the moon. Brightest. As they. John. I'm gonna be fine. How long have we been together now? On the radio? I started at Radio August about two years ago. Why? No, I mean, romantically. Do you want me to leave my wife? I only want you to do what makes you happy. I'll be waiting for you either way. Why didn't you tell me about Dorota? What didn't I tell you about Dorota? That you were sleeping with her. It was just a fling, John. I wanted to try something different. To stretch myself. I would have told you eventually. All three of us could have had fun together. You do want to have fun with me, don't you, John? 
Is it really wise to send more probes down the hole? Dimitri asked as they went over their plans. The three other scientists looked at him. Plans do the same thing while expecting different results? Are you calling? Did he? Did he tell you that he was there too? I assume Dorota was disappointed with the sex they'd had, so Zack killed her for attacking his masculinity. Well, that's just a lie. He's covering for himself. I never went into her bedroom, how could it be me? Yes. Should I be surprised you've seen it? Years ago, tattoos and piercings were frowned upon, but they're all in vogue now. Maybe branding scars will be in fashion too. All right, Dr. Sheffield, you're all hooked up and ready to go. Thanks for trying to cheer me up. We chased her up onto a rooftop and she jumped. Rain almost saved her, but he couldn't hold on. Chief Dupont dragged that up, I suppose. Now what's that supposed to mean? Of course he was trying to save her. She gave him a nod, and with that, Dimitri disappeared into the depths. Startled by the sudden voice in his ear, he'd almost forgotten about the earpiece he was wearing. All right, we're going to accelerate your descent a bit, otherwise we'll be here all day. Dr. Utani sounded... I suppose it did look a bit like that on the video. He managed to grab her ankle as she went over, but he just didn't have the strength to hold her. Still, he kept pretty quiet about that, didn't he? <laughs> How did they even get in that position, Sal? That's the question you should be asking. Sure, he tried to save her, but, but, but did he? Yeah, Dr. Tanner. She's checking up on the violet. Why are you still giving her a hard time about this? She's had it tough enough already. She's had a shopping list of medical issues. This is just the latest thing. She might seem tough on the outside, but she's frightened, Sam. About a lot of things. The doctor said the aliens are delusions, a side effect of her previous alcoholism. She's been sober six months, and I don't want to change that, Sam. The, the neuropathy she suffered due to alcohol is causing her problems. The pills are to try to help with that, but guess they have side effects too. Memory loss. She's not a monster. Just a little girl lost. She was drinking to forget. She, she ran with a bad crowd a few years ago. They branded their backs with symbols, basically a cult. The leaders were imprisoned, but they left a lot of baggage behind. You won't get any mileage talking to her about it, I assure you. Hold on. There's some scratches here. Did I do... Don't get excited, detective. I did a criminology course. They make you buy the books. Why would she say that? That would put us both at the crime scene. Uh, Dorota was fine when I left her. She asked me to come over and watch her get her freak on. Which I did, being the gentleman that I am. I, I misread the signal somewhat as I thought I was supposed to join in, which was not the case. I think she threw a teddy bear at me or something. Ugh. After that I left. I had no idea why it was spying on me. Yes, and fiddly. Yet the soft It's not what it sounds like. Dorota lost her scholarship. She said it was an administrative error. 
She showed me the letter and everything. No, I didn't. I told you he'd asked to take pictures of me. You never asked if we were selling a pendant together. The money was for her, Sam. So she could have her dream of being a cellist. I wanted her to have her dream. It doesn't matter now. No, not exactly. I told him I was in trouble with credit cards and he offered to bail me out. I asked if I could have one of his artifacts and of course he gave it to me. I just want to make people happy, to put out into the world what I want back. Is that too much to ask? It hasn't made me happy yet, but Maybe one day, someone will. I couldn't do this without him. He looks out for me. He's my best friend. What do you know, Sam? He does? That's so sweet of him, but I could never do that. Then you've been very, very naughty. I delivered radios all over town. I don't think I should have bothered with some of them though. I don't think, Violet is it? I don't think Violet liked me very much. Maybe. I don't know why anyone would be threatened by me, though. I'm not interested in stealing anyone's man. I didn't steal Poe. He gave himself to me. Working, and his eyes hadn't yet gotten used to the... Yes, uh, I'm surprised she told you about that. How did that come up? Why would Zek West know that? Maybe she was selling it to him. Ellis is a bit of a spendthrift, unfortunately. Likes to live life on the edge of her credit card limit. It's actually not the first time I've bailed her out. Several, actually. Student loan, council tax, income tax, Monte Carlo. We've become a bit intertwined financially, it would seem. I didn't expect news to travel this fast. You can't tell anyone else. I've not told my wife yet. I think she should at least hear it from me. You ask the wrong question, detective. Why now? Because of death. When a loved one, or you yourself, faces death, it makes you hold account of all your life decisions. Not marrying Ellis would be my biggest regret. Yes, I love my wife and our children. And if she loves me, she let me go. Ellis lights a fire in me. My wife never found the fireplace for, let alone lit. Alice won't die though, will she, Sam? You're going to make sure of that. And no one be coming to help him. It was then he heard the voices again whispering to him. As the murmurs grew louder, Dimitri was almost able to make out individual words in a language. How do you do it, Sam? It's been just a few hours since you've arrived, and yet you've got my life story already. 
Show me where they branded you. You can't, can you? There are only seven of us. And those faces still haunt my dreams. Thanks for bringing it up again, though. Such a joy to be around, Sam. Until we noticed he was suspended in the air, he was still inside the hole. Had he been... Which part had been a dream, and what had been reality? In all... And found the etchings he had made. Everything that had occurred after... Possibly caused by a gas, or an unfamiliar type of radiation. Climbed out of the hole. Well, did you find anything down there? Dr. Whitfield asked. Dimitri said with a smile. Juiced the etchings from his pouch. From the strangers? One word repeated over and over. I need a cross-reference with the Daedalus findings, but the first glance it seems to be about... The... It's now 10 o'clock. Here's your August update. Investigations deepen into last night's murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw. Miss Shaw, a talented cellist who had recently been granted a place at Juilliard, was found strangled at her home last night. With the murderer still at large, Chief DuPont has urged residents to remain calm and stresses there is almost no chance of anyone else being harmed. Alice, if you're listening, let me know you're okay. In other news, a handful of August residents have reported seeing strange lights in the sky earlier this evening. The lights, which witnesses describe as searingly bright, were spotted over the east edge of town, past the fire station. Have you seen any strange lights? Or for that matter, little green men? Let me know. That's 10 o'clock with Poe. August's gone crazy tonight. I've just got off the phone with someone who thinks they saw a UFO on one of the nights that Violet went missing. Aliens will be normal right now. Anyway, now you're here, it's time. What do you suggest we do with Ellis Munro? I'll send Danny over. And that means there'll be nobody at the guest house. So be extra vigilant. What do you mean you're sticking me with Danny? Danny is basically doing out a scream. I'm a sitting duck. Isn't there anyone else? You? Yes, you. Please, will you stay with me? Thank you, Sam. Thanks for staying with me, Sam. I know it's dangerous. I don't know why you're here, but I'm glad you are. It's almost 10 o'clock, Sam. When's it gonna be over? You said Brahman will call when it's safe. Should, should we call them now, or are we just supposed to wait? Shouldn't I stay with you? Isn't that why you're here? Okay. Okay. But... I don't want to go far. I'll just be in the pantry. Let me know when it's safe. Sam, where the hell is Ellis? I'm here. 
I was just hiding. Sorry. Ellis, thank God. I've been outside all the time, okay? Bromwyn Castle just called. She said the danger is over. They've done a new reading. There's another victim now. Look, Danny's outside. He's going to take you somewhere safe, okay? Sam, I think you should find out who the next victim's going to be. Then come and see me in my office. It's 11 o'clock. I'm Poe, and this is your August update. Police investigating the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw say they are getting closer to apprehending the killer. The death of Miss Shaw, who was found strangled at her home late last night, has sparked a massive police operation and caused alarm amongst August residents. Monroe has some personal business to attend to, but she sends you all her love and hopes to be back on the air tomorrow. And Monroe, if you can hear me, I'm sending my love out to you too. That's 11 o'clock with Poe. Sam, I have some bad news for you. I was going to follow through and burn Mercury. But then it started shifting in front of me. Sam. It's you. We can't predict that. The next victim. It's you. I'm sorry. I think you've interfered too much. That's why you're the next target. I've called Chief Dupont already. He's asked that you meet with him. You should go, Sam. Be careful. Sam, it's almost midnight. You're still alive. This is a good thing, but no one's even attempted to kill you yet. You've given me a lot of evidence, enough to arrest someone, but who? Make the right decision and you should be safe. If we don't, well, we've all got to sleep at some point. I can get someone to guard your room at the guest house, but it might not be enough. So, Sam, who should I arrest? During that whole thing with Alice, the only people I couldn't keep track of were Rain, Zack, and, and Violet. I don't want to believe it's Violet, but that's why you're here, you're impartial. Out of those three names, who was with Dorota at the time of her murder, or who has an alibi that doesn't check out? This is on you, Sam. Just give me a name. Violet, are you sure? Fine, okay, I trust you, Sam. I just hope you know what you're doing. I'll get the paperwork drawn up, we'll get Violet in. See if we can't get a confession to something. I'm sorry, sorry, that was in bad taste. <laughs> um, Bronwyn asked me to check that you're okay, and you seem to be. Well done, catching a killer, by the way. Well, hopefully you did. <laughs> Scream if you need me. It's one o'clock in the morning, and this is Poe with your August update. We don't normally have them at this time, but since there's a killer on the loose, I feel it's my duty to keep the radio station manned. I personally spoke with Chief DuPont earlier, and he thinks they're close to catching the killer. Until that happens, though, please lock your doors and stay inside. Remain vigilant. The light has faded, and so has my fortitude. I see things in shadows, behind doors and under desks. I hear the chattering of teeth and the glee of insects waiting to feed on me. The studio undulates like a heart that beats its last beats. I can't go on. I must to bed. Forgive me, Lady August. Forgive me.
Hello, sleepyhead. I'm so glad to see you alive. Enjoy the journey, Sam. Don't think of things as ending. Something new is beginning. Violet's locked up. She's being charged for murder. Travelers don't like being incarcerated, so they'll have jumped realities already. It's not something that a jury will believe. The shell they've left behind won't remember what they've done. And spend a life in prison. All we can do is try and stop the next one. Sam, come with us, please. We could really use someone like you and, well, just, will you? Really? Oh, Sam, that's wonderful. Let's finish packing and we can leave this afternoon. Sam, thank you. We're going to change lives, believe me. Hey, sweet cheeks. You did good, real good. You win. A Lexi hug. <laughs> Sam, I'm just going to say it because you only live once and all that. Sam, I think I've fallen for you. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. It's out there now. We can get on with our lives. You too? I'm the happiest girl in the world. We have some catching up to do. Sam. You're safe. Thank Christ. <laughs> um, sorry. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> well, Sam, I, I didn't think... Well, this changes things. I didn't think you'd leave without saying goodbye. People do horrible things to people every day. I'm just glad there's someone like you around to save us. I mean, everyone needs a little saving from time to time. Even me. Sam, you already did. That's why I'm here talking to you. And I won't forget it. Heroes don't always get on the news, but they always burn bright in the hearts of the people they save. You have an impact, Sam. Everyone does. They just forget. Keep saving people for me, you hear? Bye, Sam. Sam, you did good. I thought you would. I mean, not that I've got a signed confession or anything. Yet. Apparently, they don't remember anything about the murders, but Bronwyn seems pretty convinced it's over. Well done. I hear you're leaving town with the tarot readers. That's a real big shame you were starting to fit in here. But, good luck to you. You're doing what many of us have died trying. Leaving August. And I've stuck to my word. That problem you had, I buried it. The coroner's report is going to say the woman was dead when you arrived, not after. I don't personally believe in exorcism or anything like that, but over the last 24 hours, I'm starting to think things aren't as cut and dried as I'd like them to be. You're a good person, Sam. At least that's definitely how it looks from the outside. I am Dorota, I am 21 years old, um, I love playing cello, and i just been awarded a scholarship to Juilliard. <laughs> I just love cello. I love all string instruments, but cello is rich and deep and uh, soothing, at least to me. And no, cello is my hobby, but my real passion is... <laughs> 
It's silly, it sounds silly. Well, I would like to build a time machine. <laughs> I know, I know. But it is possible. I think people make mistakes. They do things they regret and they say things they don't mean. I want to go back in time. I want to make better choices. You know why you're here, don't you? Because you did well. And you know what happens when you do well? Augmentation. Congratulations, Agent 3.13. Welcome to... 3.14. Debriefing 3204, Birmingham. Transmit. And we're ready. Are you human? Debrief complete. Agent ready. You can go.